A funny reply I often get when I tell someone that they didn't check the blind spot is, well, I saw there was nothing there. And how did you see it? In the mirror. The thing is, the blind spot is what you don't see in the mirrors. That's why it's called the blind spot. That's like saying, I know there's no more milk in the fridge because I checked in the pantry. What's usually the first thing someone tells you when they had a collision? I didn't see the other vehicle. And in a lot of cases, why didn't they see them? Because they didn't look. And not checking the blind spot is a common reason of not seeing someone or something. So what are the blind spots exactly? They're the zones you don't see in your mirrors. You see them by turning your head and looking through the rear passenger window. For example, here there's a pickup parked to my left and I don't see it in my mirror. I have to turn my head in order to see it. It's in my blind spot. Same here with this van, and these are big vehicles on top of that. And just checking what's in your front window is not enough. You have to turn your head enough so that you can see what's in the rear passenger window too, to the side where you want to go. In order to check the blind spot properly, you should turn your head to the point where your chin is more or less aligned with your shoulder. Try not to turn your body too much if not needed, because that tends to turn the steering wheel. And that's especially the case with students, because they're usually nervous and they tend to hold the steering wheel too tight. So since their arms are so stiff, by turning their bodies, the arms follow. If for some reason you can't check the blind spot without turning your body, because of a neck injury for example, your size or whatever other reason, then you can turn your body a bit while moving it forward a bit to the opposite side to see properly. But try not to hold the steering wheel too tight when doing it. And that's especially true when checking the blind spot to the left. Checking it to the right is easier because the angle of view is wider, so you don't always need to turn your head as much. But to the left, the angle is more restricted, and on top of that, you have part of the frame of the vehicle blocking your view. So in this case, if you can't see it well enough just by turning your head, again, you can turn your body a bit while slightly moving to the opposite side. That'll give you a better angle. Now, just a note on that. If checking the blind spot is required where you're doing your exam, some examiners might not like to see you turn your body too much when checking them, or even worse, not checking them at all. If for some reason you need to turn your body a lot to check them, or can't check them at all, for health reasons like neck problems for example, like I mentioned earlier, or any other reason, don't hesitate to inform them about that before you start the exam. For example, I had a student once who couldn't see from her left eye. So she had to turn her body a lot to check the blind spot to the left. So make sure you inform your examiner about that before going on the road. It could make a big difference on the outcome of the exam. Another thing students struggle with when checking the blind spot is that they check it too long. They're scared of not looking long enough to see if there's someone there. But don't forget that when you're looking there, you're not looking in front anymore. So you should be scared of not seeing what's in front anymore instead. The key here is to do it quickly just a fraction of a second. Like I mentioned in my previous series of videos on vision, you should never stare at anything when driving and it's especially true with blind spots. If I stare at something in my visual field, at least I can still see what's around in my peripheral vision. But when checking my blind spot, I'm not seeing anything in front anymore, so it has to be very quick. There's plenty of time to see if someone's in your blind spot, even by checking only a fraction of a second. Sometimes I can even tell the vehicle's color, brand, model and so on in that fraction of a second. But the only thing I need to know actually is if there's something there. And that's another thing that tends to scare students. What if someone breaks suddenly in front while I'm checking my blind spot? Well, you should always leave a safety distance of about 2-4 to four seconds when following a vehicle at all times anyway. So that should give you enough time to react if the vehicle in front breaks suddenly while you're checking the blind spot. For that same reason, you shouldn't change lanes if the vehicle in front in the lane you want to go into is too close. Of course, that confidence of checking the blind spots quickly will come with practice, as anything else in driving, or in life in general for that matter. Now the vehicle size and their position in the lane will also determine if you see them or not in your mirror. For example, you might see a bit of a normal sized vehicle in your mirror depending on those factors, but you wouldn't see a motorcyclist or a cyclist which would be at the same height, but a bit more to the exterior of the lane. And talking about vehicle size, we ourselves shouldn't stay in the blind spots of big vehicles like buses or trucks whenever possible. Trucks tend to have a lot of blind spots, 
So when overtaking them, try to do it as quickly as possible while respecting the speed limits. If you can't overtake them, slow down a bit and move to a position where you're not in their blind spot anymore. In the next video, when do we need to check the blind spots? What I call the helpers, blind spot mirrors and vehicle mirrors with blind spot warnings and some other stuff. So stay tuned and see you soon.